2022, new year, new you. You got plans? I don't know. But there's one thing I do know. When it comes to dream destinations, not a lot of people think about this place in particular. <laughs> Prison. <laughs> dream destinations? It's not one of them. Okay. Right? okay. But if you are talking about prison, have you ever wondered about how life in a prison in Malaysia is like? You probably haven't. No. Not really. No. Well, today we get insight and a look into the systems of our country's prisons and the realities uh, with our guest today on this episode of the Tabletop Podcast. Let's go. Hey, that's crazy. That's a crazy opening. Like you just start off Chuti Chuti Malaysia. Have you heard about this though? <laughs> Nobody's thought yes. about it. And that's why we're doing today's podcast. Welcome okay. back to the Tabletop Podcast. It's your boys, the Mings. Oh my god. Uh, we've got two very, very special guests with us today. Very. And before we tell you a bit more about their stories, we're going to do a very surface level introduction. Mm-hmm. Uh, we don't want to spend too much time talking about ourselves because, who boy, we've got a oh. we've got a big one for you guys. Oh. Uh, let's start ladies first. Hi. Hello. Who you, what, what you do. do. Hey, uh, my name is Nafha Liana. Uh-huh. I'm a producer. Nice. Yes. Nice. And oh. we got. Ian Yi. Hello, uh, Ian. <laughs> almost forgot. Almost yes, forgot. Yeah, I had to think about it for a second. Oh my God. Uh, I'm an investigative journalist and documentary producer. Oh, you so definitely see it. Yeah, 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 you guys. Yeah. Yeah, I love it. I love it, guys. Today we've got some uh, big stories to talk about, uh, but we are realistically, uh, I'm not going to hide it. Mm. We're talking about the prison system in Malaysia and what goes on mm. uh, behind what you think you know about prison in Malaysia. One of those rare episodes that we actually have a purpose to talk about something. Yeah. And you, like, this Before, is this is something yep, we just, can't just go in talking about like, no, with, with no, like, we no can't. resource, right? No. So we actually have uh, Liana and Ian with us. And Ian, you've been working on an upcoming documentary called It's Time for Alternatives, uh, which is about the prison system. Uh, and Liana, who was formerly incarcerated, who stars in the documentary, is kind of based on Liana, basically, right? Right. Tell us a bit more about that before we jump into why. Yeah, it's, it's a topic that's been going around for a long time, right? I think anybody that works with the criminal justice system, lawyers, mm. journalists like myself, mm. uh, we always come across cases like Liana's mm. where it's just, uh, the, the law just has not been fair to them, mm. I feel, mm. at least, and a lot of us feel as well. And that's why there's been so, so many calls for reform all this while. And I think this is a great chance to talk about it. There are some great NGOs out there doing great work now. Mm. And uh, we decided to use her story to yeah. kind of like push this narrative forward because it's... It's an insane story. Yeah, it's incredible. Yeah. And the, the strength that she shows all the time, I think she's just perfect person for us to kind of move the needle on this issue a bit. I love that. Mm. So before you guys uh, think about whether you're continuing this podcast, this is one of those um, that goes beyond just educating yourself on Twitter and yeah. not clicking the like and retweets. That's right. Uh, if you want to make a change to this country, this for real is the first thing is education, guys. Right? We got to know. I, I think it's less about knowing what's going right is what's going wrong than yeah. figuring it out from there. That's right. But yes, today is uh, this is quite a biggie. So hey, uh, bookmark this. Hey, follow us up on Spotify and Apple if you want. Get Please a cup do. of a hot, hot cold, cold, you know, whatever you want. Like actually, um, we go, we're gonna hit it. Yeah. Right, right Let's away. Let's do it. Let's I go just want to thank bang, both bang. of you guys for being here today. I know it's not mm. something like it's not something you just wake up and be like, "Let's talk about this." <laughs> right, Anna, and especially no, for, like for, for you as well. Thank you so much for being here. Exactly. Share your story as well. Mm-hmm. But for I guess context to to set the stage for the entire conversation, could you briefly tell us and walk us through what happened and why we're all here today? Um, well, this is to share my story and my journey yeah. of being incarcerated and how menial or small um, non-violent crimes or criminals are put away mm-hmm. for too long, yeah. for too little. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. not fair. It needs to change. Yeah. So you were, right. you were like, you had to wait for 22 months. You spent yeah, 22 correct. months in prison yeah. mm-hmm. for like, just to wait for your Yeah, waiting for be, my trial. That's insane. Can, like, can you, oh. can you tell us a bit more about that? So I was arrested on the 7th of the 7th, 2014. And Ooh. then, um, not very lucky number love for me, I guess. Yeah. Uh-uh, no, it's not. Um, and I thought it was going to be like a quick one, like yeah. probably just a slap on the wrist because I honestly did not know how heavy my charge was yeah. and how serious this is. Yeah. And then when I got to court on the seventh day after my arrest yeah. and the judge told me that, Okay, your case will be postponed. You'll be indefinitely sitting in Kajang while waiting for Indef- your trial. Like just okay. like that, indefinitely. Okay. Yeah, we'll um, let you know when it comes around. 
Basically, that was it. Okay. They didn't give me an exact date from the start. Yeah. Every time that I got called back to court, it was just a, okay, another extension. We'll see you in two months. But that's not even, huh? yeah. that's not even me going to trial. That's just, I'll see you later. So that, that's one of the big problems with the Malaysian criminal justice system. Yeah. So you yeah. have bailable offenses, there are non-bailable offenses, and there's unbailable offenses. Mm-mm. So unbailable offenses means there's just no way you're going to get bailed. You're going to sit in prison while they do everything, while they do the lab tests and all that, which obviously yeah. is very unfair. Like in her case, in the end, she was acquitted, right? After yeah. 22 months, she was what? acquitted. So she spent all that time in jail. Months. Yeah. And that had that ripple of effect happen to her, her family and everything. All So many things just gone wrong. Because there's that law where certain things are unbailable. And that includes possession of very small amounts of drugs. Yeah. Uh, so in her case, uh, unbailable offenses also includes things like terrorism, uh, mm-hmm. kidnappings, Murder. and then her. Like, I don't mm-hmm. think they're on the same level yeah, at all. You know, but, not. you know, yeah. terrorism though, like a small bag of it. Just a yeah. yeah. oh, <laughs> small bag of terrorism. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> a small bag of kidnapping, yeah. maybe. So, but man, that's okay. some mad Malaysia. So every time yeah. you went to, to court, mm-hmm. they were like, See you in a bit. Yeah. There was like they, they had. It was pointless for me to go, but not really pointless because I got to see my yeah. family. But the whole back and forth to prison, like no, why? So every time you got in, how long? What, like how long would would they would they? It's hearing? never so it's a like... fixed um period <laughs> yeah, in yeah. between. So it'll be like one month, two months. I think my longest was six months. And then you go in for Wait. five minutes, and they're like, "Okay, we'll yeah. see you again." That is like procrastination on a stupid level already at this point. <laughs> yeah, it takes I'm guessing timing to a different yeah, kind what? of. Yeah. I'm guessing a lot of them were administrative delays, right? Like just case readings and things yeah. like that. Okay. Dude, oh my that is... Gosh. Okay, we're, we're going to jump into that a little bit more uh, in a bit. But just to... I, I, w- <laughs> I can't even say this question is to lighten up the mood. <laughs> okay. But I'm just going to ask, I think maybe realistically putting yourself uh, back then, I, I, I don't want to make you think about it but you know for the purpose of the conversation when you found out that you were going to spend some time at, at, at that time it wasn't you they, they had, there was no number on it right yeah like you said indefinitely you just like hey you sit here wait yeah so like when when you okay. heard that or even leading up to that was did you have any preconceived ideas or perceptions of what it might be like because i mean the media paints prison very differently i would assume yeah. to what it's actually like as well so you have your like you know orange is new black prison break Dramatize. Yeah, hold on. There's, hot, there's, there's, a, there's a set, you know, there's an art director for that, you know, yeah. uh, aircon, you know, yeah. most of the time. Uh, yeah, I don't think, you know. <laughs> so, like, what w- did you have some sort of, like, how did you ready yourself like, yeah. when, when you were about to go in? Like, was there any sort of, like, ideas you had that like, maybe it's going to be... I'll hang in here. I don't need to change the clothes <laughs> yet, you know, but I'll just sit here and wait around. That kind I of thing. think I was very much impressed by the Western movies of what we see on, like, on TV, how prison yeah. is going to be. Yeah. It's going to be a bed. Um, I have rights. I, I get one phone call. Right, right, right. All right. this the whole, the whole doesn't shebang. exist. Yeah. Oh, sh- yes. you, oh, shit. Yeah, so you don't have a bed. Uh-huh. Um, no, you don't. You're lucky if you get a mattress. Mattresses are handed down from former inmates to the next one that they like. So it's not something that you oh. come in and you get all this set straight away. No. Oh, it's like a privilege. Yeah, it's a privilege. Oh my goodness. Okay. So you only get a cup and a blanket. But sometimes if you're late, if you come into prison late, like maybe like after seven o'clock and everyone else came first and you may not have a blanket either. No slippers. <laughs> oh? Yeah, so it's just like barefoot. It's really bad. Like, this, is, this is the kajang. Yeah, the kajang one. Like I... I mean, I was limited right. to what we see like Mexican prisons. Yeah. It was like that bad. Oh no, we're yeah. Mexican I'm, level. Uh, yeah. Oh, we're, oh no, we're Mexican level. Oh. <laughs> I'm so... Sorry, I'm just... Okay, yeah. we're going to get some blanket sponsors That's up in here. Uh, okay, no. So, saying, okay. so like... Wow. What, what? Okay, so you went in. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Did... No mattress. No mattress. Were you early or late? I was late because I oh. was caught during... Ramadan time. Right, right. So they did their prayers and whatever, Bukha Pasa first, yeah. and then they attended so, to us. So like yeah. by the time I came into the cell was about midnight. Oh, so you got a souvenir mug? That's it. <laughs> yeah. No blanket. No, I didn't get a mug. I got ah. a blanket. Yeah. Oh, you ah. got a blanket? Yeah. Okay. I was late. So I guess everyone rushed for the mugs and I didn't know what was going on. So I was yeah. just like... Everyone hey, rushed for the... Okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> my pic- The picture in my head is just swirling around at this point. That's crazy. I should, so I should like, tell her the story about how you got... You finally got oh, a Oh yeah. So I actually didn't drink for the first three days ah. until someone realized I didn't have a cup and they're like, you don't have a cup and then they gave me. Hold on, you didn't <laughs> drink anything for three days? Yeah, no, I didn't drink any liquid for the first Where three days. Where are the wardens or the 
cards and how does that work? How it works is you don't go to the canteen or anywhere else. You literally just sit in your room, meals there, whatever is done there. You don't ever leave your cell unless you're going to court. Or someone comes and visit you. There's no Wait, yard uh, time, no such what? thing. Yard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was just gonna. Oh, no, like, some iron, isn't right? That, <laughs> I mean, isn't there like a canteen or like? Nothing? There is a canteen. They used to be able to go down there to eat, but uh-huh. apparently after one fight with the inmates, between the inmates and the guards, they're like, okay, you know what? Oh, no one is going down. Same. Wait, so they just sit serve in. you the food? Uh, we pick the food up from downstairs. And like, you go back to yourselves. And then we carried it. There's only like six people. So not everyone goes out. Only people who get to come out of their cell to work will take the food and then distribute the trays to all the so rooms. You had food but no water for three days. Yeah. <laughs> I, I like how you're just so like, <laughs> 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 yeah. Okay, so that's crazy. Okay, so I guess okay, okay, okay. number one, everyone who, like, for, okay, for us, like, I would think that like, prison would be akin to what you see, like, like, like on, on the, Shows, right? Mm. The bare so, minimum, like, at least, yeah. right? So, like, yeah. maybe... Okay, yeah, maybe no, like... Maybe... I don't even know about the blanket. I thought there would be, like, a mattress and a blanket, at least. Yeah. yeah. Or, I mean, but but I, you, the fact that you have to fight for a cup or, like, not even have yeah. a cup when you go in, that's yeah. crazy. So right? I'm, I'm a bit, like, in a, like... This is clearing up a lot of, like, uh, fog in my head. Because, you know, as, as a kid, uh, my teacher was scared. You know, don't do things until you go lock up. La. So, in my head, right, there's, like, a middle house in between the Balai police to the prison and there's like a lockup in the middle, right? And and I was always thinking, oh, they designed the lockup to scare the shit out of you. But it doesn't work that way. It's like straight yeah. in. Lockup is better than prison, right? Yeah, lockup's yeah. nicer than prison. The lockup is in the Balai police one, right? Yeah, correct. Then prison is just... Yeah. So you didn't even get the lockup. You just went happy New Year. Uh, no, I got to the lockup, but I went to this place called Lockup Berpusat in Jinjiang. Okay. That is like a mini prison. Oh. It's not a police station. It's just where they house you before you go to the real prison. The real pr- Oh, yeah. man. Okay. Yeah. The, the l- it's like house. a bad joke a l- the whole way. Oh, <laughs> yeah. okay. it's a lot right. of unlearning to I, do. All right. I think there's something to be pointed out even right here okay. that, that the fact that there is almost like, not, like no essentials given to, to people who are incarcerated for... I mean, it, it, this, 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 this is the crazy part. It's not even... She wasn't even charged of anything at this point. Right. Yeah. Right. So I, I guess it really comes down to what we're here to talk about, which is over prison overcrowding, right? Yeah. And why mm-hmm. decarceration of uh, minor offenses, yeah. non-final offenses, that needs to happen. Why because how? Yeah. Yeah. That, that's the problem with the prisons department. To be fair to them, they've been asking for a higher budget all the time. They've been asking for decarceration for a long time. At least the, the officers that we speak to as journalists that we've worked with, right. they'll always tell us, guys, you need to talk about this. You need to address this. We can't manage all this. Right. So that creates a cycle of kind of Poor behavior that feeds right. into poor uh, was it poor protection from the wardens and things like that. It feeds into this culture where everything just gets more and more dark and negative. Right, right. Uh, so that's why we need to, to have decarceration. That's why we need alternative sentencing to make sure the prisons aren't run the way they are right now. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. That's honestly okay. it, it, it. It's hard to think about even the fact that like you were there for like you going in not having any sort of indication of how long you might be there. Cause like there wasn't even the there wasn't even like your case wasn't even settled at that point, right? Yeah. Um what was what 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 did that do to you mentally? Like oh, at what it was point? really tough. Yeah, like yeah. the first week into um, the first week. Honestly, days. even the first week while I was at lockup, I still thought I was going home. Yeah. Okay. I still not refused, but wasn't like into like making friends or speaking yep, yep. to anyone inside because like, I'm, I'm like, just, nope. I'm just here for a bit. I'm gonna, yep, I'm, right. I'm gonna go home. Like, no, nope, yeah. I'm not gonna be your friend. <laughs> okay, okay. And that was my mistake as well. Right. And then when I got to court, and then the judge said that, and then it only hit me. So that was the first time that I actually cried. And mm. then that just continued for the whole week after that while I was in prison oh. trying to get over it. And then I think it was just throughout my whole stay. Right. It was always a different um, experience every other day. Yeah. Just getting by one day at a time, I guess. Oh gosh. Okay. Like, I think the biggest thing, I mean, in, in many things that I've read, like, uncertainty is a killer, right? Like, yeah. like it is, like, wow. It. I mean, if you knew something, if you knew there was an aim <coughs> or, like, there was, like, a light at the end of the tunnel, things are a bit more manageable if you set. Like, the first week into the second week, into, when was the next court schedule for you, like, my first one was a month away from the time I oh, went in. So a month in. So you yeah. set the month. And what happened at that month? I spent my first raya inside. Oh. Yay. 
<laughs> I don't know what to say. Okay. It, it was it was sad. And then yeah. when you went for the first month hearing, what did they say about the next date or like the progress? Uh, after that, it was two months postponement. Again, so yeah. you walk in, hey, postpone. Yeah, I two walk months. in. They just read your name. I stand out. Okay, it's postponed for. They gave me a date like two months after. Yeah, okay. that's it, and, I and think, that's it. You yeah. walk out and you go back to prison. Like, exactly, like, like like what Ian was saying as well. Like, I mean, you you what? have you have things like these happen, right? And okay. then you would think that because they have, oh yeah, we gotta postpone your 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 case, uh, your your case hearing and trial. Like, okay, you're gonna go back to the the lockup, like jail, and then realistically it would be ideal again here that everyone had you know, enough food and slippers and water <laughs> like, um, essential right. basic human yeah. necessities was that the case for uh, you? like what was it like was there was there after the cup I mean at least yeah, after I mean, the cup and like, the blanket you gave us a, that, that was a great like this first <laughs> I'm, step I'm right? tracking your inventory at some point so, so, so there you know, was like the just... cup you had a blanket no slippers no mattress for you Um, what how was there a point where there wasn't enough food? Was there overcrowded? How toilet situation? Like, it was. What was it like? One, it was overcrowded because, as I said, that I came in during the month of Ramadan, so yeah. they segregated people into um, Muslims and non-Muslims, so yeah. that yeah. I guess meal times would be easier. Yeah. Um. So when I arrived late, they opened the door, and then the inmates inside kicked the door shut and said, "It's full. We don't want them." And I was just like, "No." What? <laughs> So I was already like really scared. Like I right, don't want right. to step on anyone's toes or, or make enemies. So that was the first um, scary one. And then what the other thing that got to me was that the bathroom was in the middle of the room. So the room is oh. long. The bathroom in the middle, just one. So that's mm-hmm. where you do both your businesses, showers and whatever. Oh, wow. mm-hmm. And it's just in plain view of everyone. And I was just not comfortable with right. with doing everything in front of everyone, you know? Right. So, yeah. That's- that's wrong. Oh. oh my goodness. And I oh. guess maybe this is where I... 22 months in there, right? Mm. Like we, we'll, we'll talk about how that shaped up to be like towards the end of it. But Ian, how did you get involved with this? How did you hear about Diana's story and what made you want to, you know, start exploring it a bit more? Yeah, like I was saying earlier, there are a few civil society organizations and I think in Malaysia, we, we got to uh, hand it to our CSOs. Uh, yeah. They do a great job. Our NGOs and all that. Mm. Even now, when you're looking at the floods going around, right? Yep. Yeah. Who's the ones? Who are the ones that are going down to the ground doing the work? Right. It's all your the, CSOs all the and kayak NGOs. Owners. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. they're doing a great job, and uh, so this is one of the issues that they've been fighting for for a while. I think, in particular, people like Swaram. Mm. Um, these are people who fight for the rights of all Malaysians. You know, right. Twenty four. Uh, you know, three sixty five. You know. Right. They're doing it all the time, and we don't see their work very often. So mm. one of this is one of the big issues they're championing and, and very rightly so because you don't want people like Liana being lost in the system. Yeah. Right, right. Uh, not only because it affects her personally, individually, but it has broader implications for society as well. Yeah. So when we heard that they were doing all this, that's when we thought you know, we could get involved and uh, uh, do right. our jobs as journalists, um, tell a good story, get people informed and aware and hopefully push them to take some action as well. Right. So there are things that you can do to stop these things. And yeah, yeah. yeah sometimes you always feel like uh, I think it's a very Malaysian thing. You're always like, ah, government not doing a job. Yeah. Ah, prison wardens, why they're like that. But we have to take some ownership of it as well as a, yeah. as a society. society yeah. yeah, like we can joke about it. And I think it's, it's great that Liana is a huge, wonderful thing. Yeah, so, yeah, for everyone's so listening, think, right, we actually went through a briefing for this. Right? <laughs> yeah. And then we just, before we started, Liana was like, hey, it's okay, I like dark humor. I'm like, yep, that's <laughs> yeah. the green light. Okay. <laughs> that's Crazy. right. Mm. So, so yeah, I, I, I think uh, Malaysians, we, we can joke about it. We, mm. we can uh, have fun about it. But, uh, we do have to do something about it we as do, well. Yeah. We have to talk to okay. our members of parliament. We've got to push for change. Uh, and thankfully, the current government is doing something about it. There was yeah. some allocation for prisons department uh, under the 12 Malaysia plan and stuff like that. Mm. Uh, but I think the broader like cultural systemic change has to happen as well. The way we view prison inmates, the way we view uh, nonviolent drug offenders. Yeah. It's very important because we've been... I'm sure you guys, when you're in school as well, right? When they talk about Dada, you know, mm. they paint the, you know, it's the drug like, user is a yeah, terrible, terrible right. human yeah. being, yeah. right? Even yeah. I had Scare that technique. before yeah. I went in, before yeah. I made friends with them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, how did your like view change? Yeah, it definitely changed. I used to think that this is really bad of me, but yeah, uh, at least I learned something, right? I mm. used to feel that people were maybe poor because they wanted to be or that they're lazy. I know yeah. that was really okay, bad. Okay. But that one also, I learned inside that mm, it's, yeah. it's that's not the case. Right. And just like, um, 
offenders or criminals, they're not really bad at their core. Maybe mm. they could have made a mistake or yeah, yeah. it could also be situational, you know? Yeah, correct. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think it's just the education growing up in the primary school system that... Mm. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, we... we I mean, uh, wow, when I was in school, I think our country is like no less than half, half a century old, right? And a lot of these things are very rudimentary uh, scare tactics. Right and not really thought up the best way, right? Yeah. Like, how do you get kids not do this? Scare the yeah. shit out of them. Yeah, 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 yeah. So and then yeah, that's and then I remember yeah. all those you know the posters of like 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 criminals and stuff and like uh it's like there's a gin coming out of stuff because there's like smoke <laughs> and like <laughs> fire <laughs> yeah. and like I'm like I wanted to ask like things like how does how does any like of the substance abuse cause the fire like where is the fire from? Yeah. The is fire it hell? hell? That kind of thing, right? <laughs> Up in yeah, yeah. So like like yeah. I think I think all this has really led us to where we are today because we have the generation who's now growing up. But we are also a generation where I feel like we are open enough to like learn and relearn stuff, which is yeah. which is very important, yeah. especially like like this. Like, come on! I mean, I do agree with, with things like you know sometimes people miss the picture that people who end up in prison it's not most of the time per se by choice. It's circumstance of yeah, yeah socio economic. I just want to highlight culture. like like th there is. I mean, of course, you know you have your offenses and and, and crime and all that, but. I want to just kind of like remind everyone that Liana was in there for 22 months without a sentence. Like we're talking yeah. about the waiting period, you know. It's like, if imagine like all you guys who are listening to this, right? Like don't, you don't have to even put yourself in like, oh yeah, but I wouldn't do crime. No, we're not talking about crime. We're talking about you waiting for your business to be dealt with for yeah. 22 months. I was just going to use an example, right? Yeah. Like we can't even stand it when our Shopee delivery don't reach us for one week. Yeah. Or, no, there's or, uncertainty. Where's my parcel? Or when you are at a right. passport or IC renewal and right. you're waiting for your number. Imagine waiting for that for 22 months. No, imagine the, the number board don't have. Uh, and, and then, then you just, say, just, Come back just wait. Yeah. And then like you can't go for lunch. You can't repark your car. Yeah, correct. Uh, just wait. So, so imagine that small example. But now we're talking about <laughs> human lives. Yeah, right? yeah. Who are perpetually put into a negative space yeah. that people already think, oh, you know, prison is bad. Everyone who goes to prison is bad. Yeah. Right? Because I know, uh, contrary to what you believe, like, you know, uh, as much as we're waiting for a parcel or waiting for yeah. IC, we can't use our phones. Uh, you can't go yeah. home. You can't, right. uh, you're basically just there. And, and you're and stripped away from basic human necessities. Yeah. And I think that's the thing that we want to highlight today that for everyone who's listening, like you guys know that there is that there's privilege and there's entitlement, right? And then there is just straight up the fact that something needs to change, right? And yeah. this is a very very obvious situation. So, yeah. um, you know, I was gonna ask. So, like, you know, statistics wise, like maybe you guys can share because you already done, uh, you know, your your the, the documentary and and so I'm sure like there's a whole bunch of research has gone to it, right? Um, what are the current statistics of the prison system in Malaysia when it comes to just petty crime and then people who also like, you know, just waiting there for something to yeah. happen, right? What, what What's that like? Yeah, I, I think the main statistic you just need to remember from this is that uh, up to two thirds of uh, inmates are for are in there for non-violent drug offenses. So mm. these are, these are pretty like, someone, per perhaps somebody like Niana and I yeah. think your experience was as well, right? Like maybe about half of them yeah. were, were just people who had maybe used, used a joint yeah. or yeah. got caught with a small amount of drugs yeah. and were... Correct. Yeah. Most of them were just that we didn't have really violent criminals. I think just honestly, out of the whole prison, just like one, two mm. people that committed a violent wow. crime. So mm. in our experience, we've done a documentary previously on um, the Malaysian drug trade as well. Mm -hmm. And what we find is, again, a lot of them, it comes back to that issue of a lot of them coming from poor backgrounds. Yeah. A lot of them get involved in it. Like what Liana said, it's, it could be anybody, mm. right? Could be anybody. Some of them, they, they decided to uh, sell a small amount because their parents had medical bills yeah. and they got desperate. Some of them are don't mm. have a strong educational background. Somebody came along and promised them mm. a part-time job and they're like, yeah, sure, I'll, I'll deliver this mm. suitcase for you. And then they get yeah. caught yep, yep. and then they end up in that same position. Yep. Right. So that makes up 60% of inmates in Malaysia. 60%. That's why you have overcrowding. That's yeah. why right. <laughs> you have all these issues. You don't have enough cups. You don't have enough blankets, things like that. Yeah. That's when the dignity of the inmates suffer because right. our system encourages uh, putting incarcerating people like this. Yeah. yeah. This is taking like, um, what's the word? This is really, really taking, uh, are you, what's the word for putting out something later? Procrastination. <laughs> yeah. To a whole different level, right? Yeah. But yeah. you're right. It does, I think, I think what, what I, I, I would say is that we're not 
merely fighting for the fact that oh it's it's a prison problem or, or it's like oh it's about quote unquote uh, criminals or inmates and stuff like that right I think it's just basic human rights yeah right like you I agree it's your it's your life you know and 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 mind everyone like uh, the justice system doesn't get it right all the time and and what you could end up with is someone paying the days of their life something that should not be paid that way yeah. and then what do they do oh sorry guess you can go out now. Yeah. Like, 22 oh, months later. Like, can you imagine you the customer? Yeah. <laughs> can you imagine if there was customer service for this? What kind of hell would be raised? Seriously, like, yeah. how do you get that back? It's not like you can go and refund some receipt somewhere, right? But yeah, um, I, I think um, it, 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 this this is actually quite an interesting focus for uh, Liana's case. Um, there is also talks about uh, legalizing things like, uh, I think there was a lot of talk about Mer- like uh, what was the what's the proper word for the marijuana? Yeah. So I'm just looking for the word like um happy happy grass. I I don't know. I, I was looking for a <laughs> that's probably a safe word. Yeah. Yeah. Just like looking, yeah. right? You want to um, rephrase that whole part? Yeah. All right. Uh, what's the point you're trying to make here? I'll try. Okay, because recreational drugs. Yeah, recreational yeah. drugs or like uh, medicinal drugs, right? Because there's a whole movement um of of legalizing it, especially yeah. for people who need it. Um, and and most of these times, these are where this is going to be a bigger gray area. Like you know, you can get you can get messed up for it. Do you think that people who quote unquote use drugs deserve to go to jail, right? Because for me, um, an adult's a drug, <laughs> but I I think it's that yeah. usage, right? That usage right here is I mean in 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 line with like like redefining the whole prison structure, um, is that do you think that is a crime or uh, an action deserving of what, like, for example, that you went through, you know, because there is like, you know, said there's like felonies and like uh, people who, well, crash things. Proper into, violent yeah, Proper crimes, violent right? crimes, yeah. right? Like, do you guys, what, what is your opinion on like, well, maybe just... From the people that you've met. Yeah. And yeah. I'll be happy to speak on Liana's behalf and say that yeah. I don't think it's deserving at all. Oh, yeah. I don't think... Yeah, I don't. Mm. I, I don't think so. I think there's so many cases where, again, that's why we have prison overcrowding, right? That's yeah. where and right. you speak to organizations like Swaram. They'll they'll tell you case after case after case, just terrible, terrible, terrible tragedies of families broken apart or you mm. know lives lost to uh, silly things like this. And um, mm. that's why again, if we just find a different way to deal with uh, these types of crimes, these types of offenses, I think it'll solve so many problems. Right. And it comes down to the core of what we believe as a nation, right? As a, as a society. Are we the type of society that wants punitive justice? Where yeah. Every time somebody does something wrong, we must punish them. Yeah. We want blood. Right? Mm. We, we're baying for blood every time. And we see this on social media all yeah. the time. Yeah. Ooh, Documentaries yeah. we've done on you know, the drug trade. Everybody mm. will say, mm. right? you, If you're stupid enough to do the time, uh, crime, do the time. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's, really, that's just stupid. Uh, so do we want to be a society that prioritizes uh, punitive justice or restorative justice. Yeah, I love so restorative right. justice is a is a concept being applied in some Scandinavian nations right. uh, where oh, Scandinavia. it's more yeah yeah that Truly. great utopia right. Uh, they the have world. their hidden they they have their problems too. But you yeah, know, yeah. generally speaking, I think they're onto something where mm-hmm. instead of punishing people when they do something wrong, right. you try to help them see the yeah. error of their ways and make right, them right. become useful. Like not use, like they become. Uh, integrate them back into society yeah, in a meaningful right. way yeah. because you can't punish and you know get rid and and lock people up in a corner forever. At yeah. some point, you gotta rehabilitate. You gotta uh, restore them to uh, you know to becoming who they were before they yeah. fell on hard times. Well, what you just said, right? I think uh, when you're talking about using drugs and people who get caught in the act, I would define crime as wronging somebody else. For example, right? Like those you need to separate from society as a penalty. Potentially for me is those who threaten the life of another person. Right, because and when you when you think about it, people who have um, drug usage or, or are struggling with this, this is a struggle for an individual. And if you're right, you know you punish or yeah. there's no proper like response to it, you're just gonna put someone in a place right, yeah. to spiral down right. and potentially not do anything like, about it. It's like gambling. Yeah, put ah, the gambler in jail. Yeah, everyone in Gunting Casino Masua. It's a personal struggle, right? Yeah. Compared to like a child rapist and molester. Yeah, they lock that shit up, man. Yeah, yeah. I, I feel like there needs to be a little bit more thought about these things. It's but you see, we say so easy, muscle, right? We say so, so easy. Yeah. It's the same thing. Like, why isn't it being done? People are still yeah. waiting 22 months. Yeah. yeah. No, what, like, yeah. it's such a matter of fact. You can help us out here, man. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 
So I do want to point this out. Like, and a lot of times where these issues happen, right. people tend to get outraged, right? And in the work that we do, every time we release a report, mm. uh, we know we we kind of already anticipate that people will be oh, this is terrible. Hey, yeah. What's the government doing? Right. What's right. police doing? Yeah. But sometimes it's not that straightforward as well, right? Because yeah. these laws were made at a time where drugs were people didn't understand fully yes. what the implications right. of the right. war on yeah. drugs would be. That to them, it's a dangerous thing, it's terrible, and we we've got to stamp it out. Yeah. And the best way we know how is to lock them up. If, yeah. So we as a nation need to realize as a society, as people, that we have to move on. We need to yeah. understand what the data is telling us, what the research is telling us, and don't be so stubborn. Because the Malaysian thing is always, I, my parents used to cave me or so what, and yeah, I turned out fine. Yeah. And I'm like, no, you didn't turn out fine. No, you did not. You did not. Up, son. <laughs> Auntie, uncle, <laughs> y'all did not. That is punitive justice, Sorry. and yes. you are not doing okay. No. But, yeah, but I think Liana can also maybe speak to, like, she mentioned something in our documentary as well about... Um, what what are kind of kind of the alternatives? Yeah, uh, let no, we were just, just gonna, locking yeah, them let's up. Let's go for yeah. it. What what's alternatives? Then? I mean, definitely locking someone up is not an answer to society's drug right. problem. Yeah. Right. Definitely, you'll have to give them some sort of outlet, some sort of coaching, right? Um, for them to just become better, for them to realize their mistake and how they can be better, yeah. and mm. to allow them a chance to assimilate back into society as yes. better people yeah. instead of locking them away yeah. and. St- Stupidly hoping that they'll change. No, it, no. they'll just be worse. You're, 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 what you say is, like, I think, is why the choice is being made. Um, I mean, it's and it, it is it's this whole cycle, right? Locking people up, right. short term solve. It does not solve the long term problem at right. all because it doesn't help the problem. Helps it for the short run, like everyone is like, oh, okay, uh, you're doing the right thing. Uh, they come out and they go back in again, probably yeah. because the problem is not solved. Right. And then, and then you just get a cycle over and over again. Not enough right. funds, not enough resources. More and more people going in, yeah. and and yeah. people are like, hmm, I wonder why. You should just really just lock everything up, you know. Yeah. Um, and if you think it's not affecting you, that's your taxpayer money. Yep, that's the money <laughs> you're paying for a prison complex where people just keep going back. The problem over is and not over. Solved. You're not yeah. solving the problem for them. The problem. You is might as well solved. invest that in other programs. You know, therapy, community service, yeah. things like yeah. that. Alternative sentencing. Because Alternative yeah. sentencing. Yeah. Or, yeah. Yeah, or even things like that. We need to relook the law also for for minor drug offenses like yeah. what Liana went through, so that they don't have to be unbailable. Right, right. That, right. That's crazy, that's, right? Yeah. Because yeah. technically, right. I mean, if a family, is a family like this is just just coming from counseling and therapy. Right? If the family is able and willing to help, one simple thing a judge could do is relinquish the 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 care for yourself to your family. So you are like under a parole office. Like your yeah. family is your parole officer, right? And, and, and just to clear up the air, let's just do a clear, clear question right here. Why can't it be as straightforward as, hey, you, stop drugs? You know, or, hey, you, stop do, you know? I'm locked you, you stop. Yes. Like, I mean, but that's because that is in very stupid terms yeah. what is happening right Plus now. Plus a simple-minded right? offense is, uh, yeah. hey, just stop using drugs. Hey, if not, lock up. I take it from you, you stop. Th- that's yes, you the know? Yeah. current equation, right? So and why, why isn't it not as straightforward yeah. as that? Yeah. Because obviously, um, drug users can be separated into two, those yeah. which actually have addiction to it mm. and those that use it recreationally. Yeah. I mean, I guess saying someone don't use it anymore, if you're a recreational user, yeah, can. Yeah, yeah. But then if someone actually has a problem, if they're yeah. addicted to it, that mm. means that they have an illness. Yes. That mm. means we have to treat it yeah, like right. that person's a patient and Correct. get them the proper help. Yes. Right. Not locking away. I love that. Yeah. With no mugs. Yeah, because no I'm, not at all. I'll translate that to the whole gambling thing, right? You gamble during Chinese New Year because it's recreational with your family <laughs> and friends. And then you have people who get oh, money from oh. loan sharks who are in a constant cycle well, I have to g- of I need to, you know, right. win, win mm. big, right? There's mm. a difference. There's, a, there's an addiction and then there's recreation. Same thing with cigarettes, right? Cigarettes is, um, it, in, 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 for, I mean, for all purpose and intent, it is a drug as well, nicotine. Right? There's, right? A, there's an addiction that can be formed to it. Some people right? go for the exhaust pipe. Some people, yeah. Some people never are, know. Some people are never social know. smokers, right? You mm. sm- I, I don't buy cigarettes, but if my friend's smoking, I'll smoke. Mm. Some people smoke two packs at once. Just like eight cigarettes in one yeah. hand. Um, I don't like know who you're hanging out with. Shit. Uh, in the nostrils. Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> every hole. We see that every day you on are the streets. it with cigarettes. And that, is, that person the needs help. But yeah. you see, the problem is like yeah. just because nicotine is a allowed is is, is is an allowed drug or substance, then it's like everybody's mm. like, yeah, it's cool. That's the same thing when you look yeah. at like drug right. and substance usage, right? Right. I, um, I do I do think the government and people in charge need to take a relook 
relook into this whole thing about hey, if you guys are listening to this and like, hey, it sounds like common sense, that be like not know why, you know, not do why. You mentioned something just now, right, Ian? What can we do? And and everyone kind of feels helpless, right? I think the helpless part it's is insane, like yeah. I can I can retweet, but but then how <laughs> yeah. do I go to rally? Uh, do I stand outside the police? <laughs> What yeah actually okay so if everyone and you're, you're listening, um, even for me right because for us a, a lot of our work is spreading awareness and yes everyone can spread awareness but what can you actually do like what are some good steps? Yeah, I think follow the work that these civil society organizations yes. the <clears throat> follow mm. the work these civil society organizations are doing. Right, uh, they do have a lot of call to actions on these things, a lot oh. of petitions you can sign. Right. Um, another thing is always just remember that there is a lot of power in your vote as well. Mm-mm. When GE and things like that come along, uh, understand, back. yeah, understand who's going to fight for these issues. Yeah. Understand uh. who who is treating these issues seriously and has a, a more progressive view on these things exactly. and wants to wants to reform the system versus guys. people who just want to be entrenched in power. And, yeah, where and, where, yeah, where would they when it's raining, guys? Where <laughs> yeah. would they when it's raining? Building skyscrapers, yeah. so. Maybe yes, a quick right. cut to ask uh, what what's the call to action that we should sign up for the petition at pilipolong.my? There okay. we go, got you both. <laughs> All right, right there. We'll, we'll, we'll do that later. Do that later. Yeah. Okay. Um, Liana, I want to ask you because I think this mm. one stems back to um, really the whole support system. You coming out after twenty two months, um, of course, you know there, there's going to be stigma about someone who's coming out, about someone who's been in there. Mm. What was what was your like? How, what was it like coming back into the world mm. after twenty two months? It was scary, and it was quite a lot to deal with. To be honest, um, it was almost I could say almost harder than actually serving, um, sitting inside. Oh, yeah. It was because this is real life. Yeah, Mm-mm. this is what my life is now. So coming out, um, even simple things like talking to people again, I had trouble with that. Um, it's hard for me to make new friends. That's right. why, like you know, you saw me just sitting down minding my own business. Oh, that's I'm like s- very normal in our team, actually. So <laughs> sorry. <laughs> As opposed to, I used to be much louder and much mm. more outgoing. I feel before, yep. right, so it's right. definitely a challenge coming out and yep. and getting over these fears and yep. not questioning myself. Like, right. am, am am I good enough? Yeah. Will people want to so, be friends with me? It's but, so mad, right? Because like before this, it was the fear of getting in. <laughs> yeah. It was that door that was kicked in your face, and yeah. then after that, it's like, do I want to go back out? I and and I think I remember we were talking about this a bit as well. I think this is the thing that scares a lot of people who finish their time, right? Like, how do we go back now? Yeah. So much time is used to to put you in one spot, but nothing is used at all to help you figure out how to get back into right. real life, right? Um. So I guess this is the reformation that we need. That's why, you know, uh, alternative sentencing is, I think, a better thing as well. Um, Definitely. Because I think, like, one thing we, we we were discussing prior to the podcast as well is that not everyone has, like, a great support circle no. or a family right. who's there, right? right? And then yeah. people, like you guys mentioned as well, people who end up going back in over and over no, and yep. over again. And there's no amount of time that helps a person so like, did you have a story about that one as well? I think I was only able to recover and more or less assimilate back myself into society only because I had a strong support system. Well, yeah. mm. I had my close friends and I had my family and that helped. Um, I can't say the same for everyone because yeah, I right. have kept in contact with some of them yeah. and some of them are still going through a hard time now. Yeah. I mean, yeah, right. it's not easy to rebuild your life again, it's especially not, like yeah. when you start comparing your friends are here and you're still... Yeah. Restarting. Correct. Right. And then I think yeah. Ian mentioned earlier on in, in, in the podcast that it, there is a ripple effect. The minute you go in, right, there is mm. a label that's placed yeah. on you. Whether or not you've done anything, the fact that you've gone in, whether it's for a week or a month or 22 months, mm. right, that you're like, oh, this guy went in, right? And sometimes people really have a hard time. Like, once that's put on you, you can't... It, it, that, that's you for life, right? Yeah, and it's not only towards you. When I, when I say ripple effect, I mean uh, what it does to your family and your yeah. community as well. Yeah. Uh, there's this story... Very, very tragic story. Uh, so we were investigating um, drug crimes between Malaysia and Hong Kong. So there was a period where there was this huge spike of drugs being transported from Malaysia to Hong Kong. Uh, mm. And they were recruiting teenagers because they reali- they suddenly realized that, oh, there's this huge population here in Malaysia mm. uh, lacking education uh, from poor backgrounds. 
uh, and we can exploit them by sending mm-hmm. them to Hong Kong. Malaysians, uh, we are fairly well off, <laughs> apparently. Our passports are quite powerful. We know that, right? Mm-hmm. So you can travel to a lot of countries. So they, they realize this is a good place. So one of the victims of a scam like this was a young girl, 15 years old, when she was recruited. Oh no. The first oh. trip overseas, first time on an airplane, got caught. They, they asked her to wear a pair of shoes. They say, we're going to take you on a free holiday. Parents didn't know better, tried to ask her not to go, but they're like, we are poor. We might never be able to afford to let her go on a holiday overseas. Oh. So finally, she, finally they relented. So they say until today, it's the worst decision of their life. Right? Oh. So now she's stuck in a prison in Hong Kong. Uh, for, yeah, for, and oh, my point is, oh my God. what it does to the parents. Right. So they were poor to begin with, never thought they'd be able to afford to buy an air ticket for their daughter. Mm. Um, they were hawker sellers. Um, and that's it. Their life is gone. They spent all their savings uh, trying to get her back. Trying to get her back. Mm. The first time they've been on an aeroplane was to fly to Hong Kong to visit their daughter in prison. Oh, goodness. That was their first trip overseas. And Hong Kong is expensive, right? Oh, yeah. So they spent all their savings um, trying to get her back. Mm. And in the end, um, thankfully, the criminal justice system in Hong Kong is a bit better. Yeah. So there are some allowances for this and that. It's much more measured. They realize that she is a first-time offender. She's young, everything. Mm. So she's going to spend seven to eight years there. Oh. Uh, but even then for her, that's Goodness. she's only going to be back here in, when she's 22, 23. Um, so what does it do to her family? Yeah. What does it do to the yeah. parents' business? How are the parents going to, to move on? Yeah. Right. Uh, it's very, very difficult. And she was one of the lucky ones because she got it reduced to seven to eight years. Yeah. Can you imagine there was, some of these syndicates were sending people to China? For oh example, where there's the death penalty, oh, yeah. or some of the again, unfortunately, is a lot of uh, people from African nations that are also tricked with these kind of scams to come to Malaysia, where mm. there is also the death penalty. Yep. Um, so yeah, it's this. That's why a punitive criminal justice system just doesn't work for me, yeah. uh, and I don't yeah. think a lot of any experts will tell you Correct. any different. Yeah, realistically, I mean, you can see that in like you know your big, big tyrant countries like <laughs> Korea and China. <laughs> Gotta cut that out, probably. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah, because you're not. Gonna... It doesn't solve anything, right? Like, uh, uh, sorry, yeah, because this system doesn't solve anything. Like the death penalty does not solve anything. You're, you're not, you're not damaging anything other than a, uh, a male, like a a male boy or male girl, right? I mean, they call them the mules, right? Like the ones yeah. who fly stuff. It, it doesn't damage or it doesn't deal with the root of the problem at yeah, all. Correct. The people who are causing the problem obviously know this penalty and they know how to get around it. Exactly. And I think the work that has, I mean, everyone knows the work that, the real work that has to be done is how do you save these people yeah. who have been put into this position and how do you deal with the real problem that's going on? Right, yeah. So, hey, Malaysians, you have a lot of free time, I know, because God, no, no one's going anywhere in this flood. I mean, at this time, sorry. Uh, by January, I hope it's dried up by then. Um, so, yeah, I think we're talking about what we as what Malaysians can do. can do to help. Like, we can complain, we can joke about it all Oy. we want, right? But there are things that we can do. Yes. And I think if, 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 if you guys don't believe um, how powerful us helping ourselves is, Look uh, at the white flag movement during MCO. Look at Malaysians coming out during the floods, right? There where is, are these boats coming there is, from? There we is have power boats. in the community, right? And I think maybe that's time. Uh, it, maybe, maybe it's time to turn that focus and energy and support to also help Something ourselves, matters, right? Yeah. Here in this situation. So if you're wondering what you guys can do as Malaysians, let's put some of that focus and attention and support into helping not just yeah, you yeah. know yourselves, but really the whole country and the people who need it as well. Mm-mm. Pilehpeluang.my. Check it out. Pilehpeluang.my. Um, there's going to be some resource there. And basically what it is, if you sign up, if you really just get involved in this, share it around, guys. You have all the stupid petitions for like, you know, let's make Disneyland Malaysia. Let's put it to <laughs> actual use now, right? Get your friends sign up, right? And Sorry. basically what it does is that the organization, organizations behind this as well, they're going to bring it over to the MPs. And then, guys, we have a solid case. We've got people supporting it as well. Um, and, and honestly, like it's the bare minimum we can do, yeah. right? Is there, what, what other things can we do? Liana, like, what was something that you felt that you could, and you and everyone else could use more of like, when you came out, um, the support circle? What, what were the things everyone that could have been to a lot right better? Now. Yeah. It's all you. I think definitely if we can reform the way we punish people, mm-hmm. that will help a lot. Mm-mm. I think mostly that. Sometimes the rotan doesn't work. Sometimes setting you in the corner doesn't work. It's about, I do think it's about looking at what has been done. What is the problem? And what's the proper response to it? You know, I, I mean, come on, we're Asians, right? If we don't believe in the whole uh, Western method of like, hmm, go for quiet time, look at the corner of a tree. <laughs> 
for three like three minutes, five minutes. Why are we doing this to people for twenty two months? You know yeah. that kind of thing. Yeah. Well, but what about you, Ian? What's what's your your last word, thoughts, advice for the guest today? For the guest, for the guest today, for, for listeners. listeners today. Good yeah, lord, today. <laughs> my brain is twenty twenty one. Yeah, I I think just really remember Liana's uh, story. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think it's so important, uh, and and try to th- to think what does punitive justice do to yeah. to to someone like her. Yeah, mm. uh, in a case like like hers, and and imagine this is something I I thought that she said in the documentary that was really great as well. She said this could happen to anybody. Literally, yeah. anybody. it's happened yeah. to some yeah. inmates that she knew. Um, sorry. It's happened to some of the people she met uh, in prison as well, where they were just in the same room as a drug bust and they spent the same 22 oh, months there gosh. because we of this concept of, the, of us having to punish people, of us having to lock people away instead of uh, finding more nuanced right. responses yeah. and trying to, you know, like right. what you said earlier, find right. different ways to, to help them. Yeah. So, so remember that, like remember Liana's story, remember restorative justice, alternative sentencing. Those are the things that you want to, I hope you're searing to your memory and uh, go out and do something about yeah. it. Yeah. yeah, I think this story needs to be heard definitely. Thank you so much for sharing with us, guys. I, it means so much. Um, to kick off the year, really is something so close to home because we're Malaysians. Yeah. And like you said, it could happen to anybody, even if it's not intentional, right? Hey. Um, guys, this episode has been... Woo! I hope you guys took notes. Yeah. Okay, I don't believe in New Year's resolutions. I believe mm-hmm. in petitions. Pet- 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 petitions. Petitions. Petitions yeah. is not the right <laughs> word. Go, go, please. Go use your times. Look at your screen. Click something useful, please. Uh, go visit pilipong.my uh, and check them check them out You know when the site is up. Um, I think we, if we all understand what awareness is and what it's doing to everyone, the more we know it, the more education is spread, yeah. the, the more we can address the problem at the root. And it's, it's, and it's not about... I'm just sitting in front of my phone. I can't do anything. Yep. The more we speak up about it, that's how things start moving. Yeah, correct. We it should, matters to us. Yeah. yeah. If we are going to pay so much value and time and effort to tracking down our lost parcel, we need to give more respect to people's freaking lives who are in limbo. Yeah. Right. Come on. If we can do that for your tapau package, we can definitely do that for our fellow Malaysians. Please. Please, guys. May you. What's the song recommendation of this the week's year? recommendation? <laughs> is by Charlie Lim. It's called Room at the Table. Oh no! Have a listen to this one. It's so good. Kill me. Oh. Check it out. Charlie Lim, Room at the Table. So good. Oh. But I really hope you guys enjoyed today's podcast episode. I hope you learned something about it. Please tag us. And you have ed- and if you guys have any questions for Liana or Ian, send it to us. We'll try to get them uh, the questions so that they can answer you as well. Mm-mm. And if you guys want to find out more, please check out pilepalong.my. Sign up. Um, but if you guys also want to get caught up with all the latest podcasts that we have, yeah, yeah. the takeaway table is coming back in full force this January. We're already oh, back and running. I mean, all right four now. shows available yeah. on YouTube, Spotify, Apple okay. Podcasts, and the whole shebang. I don't know what you're doing if you're not listening. In. I mean, yeah, but look out for look out for the documentary, guys. I'm looking forward yes, to it. Please, I'm, please. you will. You will recording. I'm yeah. I mean, I mean, it, yeah. we we still be waiting at we'll the recording. Watch it already by now. Just <laughs> just saying. But if you have more questions, uh, join our Discord and chat with us there. Send us a message on our IG. If you want to get involved with this effort, please let us know and we'll point you the left way. The <laughs> left. Pretty much on my left. Uh, yes. That's it for this Thank week. Thank you so much, Nian and Ian. You guys You're have welcome. been amazing. I feel like we need to do a part two about this. Well, There's so much to talk about. I, I want to know that. more yes. about the cutleries. You need to cover the <laughs> mugs this time. Oh, life. Oh my gosh. Mexican. <laughs> I don't that's know about that one. Check me today. Thanks so much for listening, guys. We'll see you guys in the next one. Stay safe and keep those butts clean. Ciao.